Welcome to Tom Talks. Join me once a week right here on Tom Bully YouTube channel. We're gonna break down all the latest and greatest walleye fishing tips, walleye fishing tricks, the absolute location where these fish are right now, and all the practical, relevant information you want and need. Hooked off. And look at that, just gone. For all the information you want and need, stay tuned right here, once a week, Tom Talks. What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. Now the intro of this video might have been a little bit deceptive. As it says, we do one of these like every single week and I wanna say it's been like three months. So however many weeks that is, that's how deceptively incorrect this intro is. But I um, wanted to do a Tom Talks tonight. Um, just kind of wanted to, it's been a while since we've done one of these guys. And this is kind of an avenue where I feel like I could talk more directly to you guys. And uh, that's always good when we do more of those, I think. And uh, I should probably be doing one every week um, just because it'd be kind of be cool. You know, this channel, it's kind of funny. This YouTube channel started out as almost like a, uh, like fishing reports or like uh, information sharing. And I feel like it's kind of involved into more just uh, like travel and kind of cool bites in different areas or just kind of a practical approach to a lot of multi-species fishing. And this year it's just been hardcore walleye fishing for the most part. Most years I, I do a lot more multi-species stuff. Um, and that's generally because I get burned out on walleyes. I like fishing walleyes more than I like fishing anything. And uh, we've been at the walleye fishing thing now since February 28th, the last day of February. And uh, we've been fishing, started out on the Mississippi and gone kind of all over since then. And there's a whole bunch of new places we're gonna go from here on out. But uh, um, yeah, what are we talking about tonight? Well, today, you know, we're obviously kind of getting into that. We've been in the kind of those dog days of summers for a while now. And uh, it has been, honest, honestly, and if you guys are struggling, this should give you guys a lot of confidence and make you guys feel better. This has been the toughest summer I've ever fished for walleyes in northern Wisconsin and northern Minnesota. Are we going places and catching fish? Yes. Is it glamorous, like really cool fishing? Um, no. And I, I was saying the other day to Shelby, I was like, man, when was the last time we just got in the boat and we were like catching so many fish? It was like, you know, like when you get together with your buddies and you're all just giddy because everybody's reeling one in. It's been a while since I've had one of those bites. And uh, I think that's just kind of the way it seems like this summer's fishing a lot of the destinations I've been. And uh, it is what it is. I mean, we're getting videos, they're not glamorous, but it's always good to kind of show that practical, um, you know, real side of life. So don't feel like anytime we're filming a video, it's something that just comes so naturally, it's ridiculous. And uh, most of the time there is a lot of hard work that kind of precedes um, a lot of the videos we shoot. But yeah, we're kind of in this midsummer transition to fall. And I actually just did a podcast the other day talking kind of about this time of year um into you know kind of that early fall bite and we're starting to get some cooler nights up here in the north woods this week i think is going to be a little bit warmer but um these fish are kind of slowly going to transition out of what they're doing now but for the next you know probably three four weeks we're going to be looking at a similar bite where fish are on a lot of these deeper transitional areas and then you also have some fish on some lakes way up in a weed edge and we've kind of filmed a variety of those kind of bites the last video we filmed was a. Uh, um, day before today, um, so day before yesterday for you guys watching this. And out on Mille Lacs, we were trolling lead core and having a ton of success. Those fish were all out, you know, in 28, um, 27 feet of water right in there. Some were a little bit shallower. And uh, that's kind of a common place, you know, uh, on these big, big natural lakes or great lakes, these deep transitions are a lot more obvious um, because they run for miles and miles and miles. And you might have a huge rock or gravel flat that comes way out to 27 and then it meets that base and it gets real flat and soft bottom. And that transition is just a natural kind of corridor for fish this time of year. And uh, a lot of different bites can happen there. Generally, those bites are very spread out. So you end up doing a lot more trolling. Um, you know, some destinations like your, maybe like your Lake of the Woods or like your Green Bay or, you know, or, or even out on Mille Lacs too, there's bites like this where fish are just out in soft bottom areas, out in deep mud areas and pulling lead core spinners or crankbaits, you know, things like that are productive in those areas too. Now on the flip side, um, on a lot of our Northern Wisconsin lakes, um, you also have a deep bite or, you know, Northern Wisconsin, Northern Minnesota, a lot of your kind of smaller bodies of water that a lot of us are probably used to fishing, you know, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 1,000 acres. Um, there's kind of been a split bite, some fish out in deep water, some fish up on a weed edge, and uh, you can catch both those fish. Generally, those fish up on a weed edge are a little bit easier to catch, I would say. Generally, they're a little bit more active overall. And uh, we were kind of doing a similar thing to that, like out on Leech, um, where we were fishing fish around humps that had like, uh, like a real fine weed on them with a lot of life. And uh, 
a lot of these weed areas, you know, where that hold walleyes this time of year, they're close to deep water, they have a lot of life going on, and that's kind of where we're targeting those fish. And generally, you can do a whole bunch of presentations when you're targeting walleyes in the weeds. You can jig, um, you can throw spinners, um, you can slip bobber for them. Those are kind of the number one. And we've kind of showcased, you know, a whole bunch of that stuff um, kind of in the past, you know, week or so here. And I always feel bad when content gets kind of too stagnant. And uh, summer is just kind of one of those times where it gets stagnant, right? I want to go out and showcase something like, um, oh, this is a cool thing that also works this time of year that, you know, it, it's super exclusive to this or it's new because of this. And, um, this is just that time of year where the bite is just the same for the longest period of time, you know, midsummer. So, um, you know, I apologize if you guys are getting bored of any of the walleye content. Hopefully you're not because most of it's situational. And I don't know how much of that is kind of portrayed in the videos, um, but a lot of it is, uh, you know, trolling spinners on a Malax or a leech um, is very different than trolling spinners on a 1000 acre inland body of water on a weed edge so there's a lot of different things in play the tools the most effective tools are pretty much the same every, everywhere um, you know if you're struggling to catch walleyes it's not because you don't have the latest and greatest fishing lure that is this this and that right it's just because um, you know a whole bunch of steps in between there a lot of times it's just going very simple in the summer you know a hook a weight and some form of live bait and um, you know I always like I said I always want to kind of come out with a new and improved video of doing this and doing that and uh, this is another thing we were just kind of talking about on a podcast I just did the other day where you know the fundamentals are ultimately what catch you more fish every single day over and over and over right and it's you know looking at your graph reading your electronics um, finding productive areas and then you know very simply putting a bait that those fish should bite in front of their face over and over and over until you have a successful day. Um, that's kind of just the fundamentals of success, whether you're in a good bite or a difficult bite. So now I also wanted to take some of this time and kind of ask you guys what you guys want to see. Um, like I said, kind of, you know, several minutes ago now, um, I love walleye fishing. Walleye fishing is obviously kind of my niche on YouTube. Um, I grew up as a multi-species fisherman. I like kind of like fishing for everything, but walleyes are my passion. Um, so, you know, whether that's I kind of run out of video ideas a lot of times and a lot of times if you guys see like long you know maybe like a week of no videos i film every single day so i'm on the water every single day with the exception of you know some fluke things that happen i'm on the water every single day with a camera in front of my face trying to get videos now there's some days where like i just don't know what to film or i'm like that is that's too similar to the last video we filmed so i just kind of go through the motions of catching the fish and don't really like the video on the back end and i'm kind of slowly trying to go to this progression where I'm not I'm only putting out videos if I feel like I really like the video if I feel like it kind of tells a story and it comes together and it has some good valuable information pieces in it um, but as far as like kind of just kicking out the same thing over and over and over I'm um, not really a fan of doing that anymore so I'm kind of trying to move away from that but I really want to know like what you guys want to see I mean I know we get comments for like musky all the time um, and lake trout all the time which are definitely things that are on our radar and definitely things we're gonna do and have done a little bit so far this season that'll turn into videos most of my musky fish and I always just like like to save for some reason till like that early September, late August time frame when fish come way up shallow. And uh, generally it's a really fun bite that time of year. So we'll definitely be doing some of that. Um, but I do wanna hear from you guys, like where you guys want to see this channel go. Cause it's something where as I go forward, you know, I kind of struggle with like, what do I want to put out there every day? How can information and content continue to be different and things like that. Um, and your guys' opinion often drives the direction that this YouTube channel goes. A lot of times our videos are made off of um, what you guys want to see. And um, a lot of times, you know, I, even though I don't reply to a lot of comments, I do read pretty much every single comment that goes on a YouTube video. I honestly just don't have enough time in a day to, to sit down and write responses to everything. But I do appreciate all the input and things like that. So now it kind of comes natural is I feel like I know a lot of what you guys want to see. And most of it's the same, you know, a lot of what we've been doing. It's this practical information that pertains to bodies of waters that you guys fish. When I started this YouTube channel, I wanted it to be the fishing show that was never on TV or the fishing show that I wanted to watch, which is something that was focused on body of water that I fish um, with presentations that were very feasible. I didn't want to watch something that was on um, this little hidden secret lake that none of us are ever going to fish in our entire lives with a lure that only works on that lake because they're totally unpressured fish. I wanted to see the real life stuff and that's kind of hopefully a lot of what this channel 
um, puts out there. I mean, pretty much every body of water we fish is a highly pressured body of water um, where walleyes are very sought, out, sought after and kind of the primary reason people go to that destination. And a lot of the bodies of water we go to are good bodies of water. Right around my house, you know, within several hours of my house, um, all the walleye fishing here is, is generally highly pressured and very difficult, especially in kind of the immediate area of my house, which kind of brings me to another point I want to talk about, which was, I think the importance of catch or release. And I was thinking, I wanted to do a Tom Talks all day today. And I asked Shelby, what should I do about it? And the first thing that she blurted out was doing catch and release. Do something about catch or release and how pressured these fish are. If you fish a lot, you've probably realized how pressured fish are now. And uh, it is pretty incredible just how many more people are, are fishing places now. And I can already see the YouTube comments. People are already starting to type this on their computers. Well, Tom, you show everybody how to catch these fish, so you know you shouldn't be complaining about this. I'm not complaining at all about this. I'm just stating the facts here, saying there's more people fishing than ever. Electronics have reached a point, and people like me showing people how to use their electronics to find fish in a faster, much faster than they ever have before in their entire lives. Um, you know, it, 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 I'm not gonna say it makes success easier, um, but it um, definitely puts, you know, the cards are more in your favor than they've ever been if you put in the work. Um, so with that being said, more people plus these tools available. Um, one thing I think we have to do as a whole as a walleye fish community, I almost relate it to the musky fishing. Remember when muskies, nobody would ever let a muskie go. And, or yeah, yeah, nobody would ever let a muskie go. They were all, everybody was keeping muskies back how many years ago. Now, nobody keeps a muskie anywhere. I'm not saying that's the way walleye fishing has to be. Uh, but what I'm saying is, I think we all have to kind of look at things and say, um, do I need to keep the full limit to feel successful? There's still this huge mantra out there where keeping the limit is someone's validation of success on the water. And, uh, you know, to some people, I think that's what fishing is, you know, which, you know, if you're that way, that is fine. I would just ask and say, you know, do you have to keep those fish to feel like it was a successful day? And I think no matter what the sign says at the boat landing, whether, whether this is, you know, five fish or two fish or one fish, um, I think we all have to kind of try to do our part to, uh, you know, make sure there's these fish these fish are still in these lakes in the future and i know we can all say like oh well, they need to stock more fish well you know they kept too many fish here whatever 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 there's a million excuses right um but but the reality is that there's more people fishing than ever before it's probably easier to find fish than ever before there's more information that people's fingertips than there ever has been ever before and the fish in a lot of bodies of water cannot keep up with it. And that's just kind of the reality of the situation. So I always kind of want to air that out there. I'm not going to tell anybody they can't keep fish or, you know, anything like that. I just always want to put that out there and just kind of hope that people see um, that side of it, that um, like those are the facts. If you fish every day and you see what goes on on lakes, you kind of realize that this is, you know, this is a train that's never going to stop. There's never going to be less pressure. There's never going to be less technology available to anglers and there's never going to be less information to you know for people to get on a hot bike quickly so you know kind of think about all these things when you're on your next walleye fishing trip and uh you know i'm i am very uh motivated to go in some direction as to kind of not necessarily like be a voice for any of this but uh try to start some kind of project that almost um it makes the facts more aware or makes what's going on a lot more aware to people so that might go somewhere in the future and i know this tom talks was a little bit of a rant but uh you know sometimes i like to do these just to kind of um do a little bit more direct talking to you guys and uh it's late at night right now which is most of the time when i do these tom talks and uh the boat is loaded up and we're about to get back on the water tomorrow to shoot some more content but i do appreciate all you guys watching a lot of this stuff if you see um spans of no videos just remember that i am still out there i am still trying I do this every single day to try to get good t content for you guys. So I always say it's like um, it's like shooting a movie that you don't know the script to. And that's always how I describe shooting fishing videos. But I appreciate you guys watching this quick little con Tom Talks. It was just kind of a, um, a rant for the most part. But I always like doing one of these once in a while for that little bit more of a personal kind of talk with you guys. So maybe we'll do some YouTube lives or something like that in the future. But like I said, I appreciate you guys watching. Another thing I hugely, hugely appreciate is all the clothing purchases. Um, they're all linked right down in the description if you want to check it all out. And it does mean the absolute world to me that you guys support me doing what I do. And in return, I try to give you guys the most bang for your buck doing what I do. And hopefully you guys um, feel that in return. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more content and uh, we'll see you guys next time.